Hello everyone. I welcome you all on behalf of Edureka to this session on Azure DevOps. There are a lot of things that we are going to discuss today. All right, so let's see what we are going to cover today. We're going to learn what is DevOps. Now, when we talk about DevOps, we're going to touch upon some of the basic concepts of DevOps. Then we'll learn about what is Azure DevOps. Now, before we learn about Azure DevOps, we'll also learn about what is Azure. All right, so we'll learn about what is Azure. We'll learn about what is DevOps. And finally, when we combine all these things together, what we are getting as part of the Azure DevOps. And next, we'll learn about what are the different components of Azure DevOps. For example, boards, how do you create your task? How do you keep up your source control? And how do you do deployment? All these things we are going to cover as part of the components of Azure DevOps. Next thing that we are going to cover is about a demo on the Azure pipelines. So we have got a lot of things to cover in today's session. All right, so before we begin, as I said earlier, we'll learn about what is Azure. Then we'll learn about what is DevOps. Let's take up the first point. What is Azure? Now it's a cloud computing platform. You must have heard about Amazon Web Services. You must have heard about Google Cloud Provider. In the same way, we have got the Azure platform, which is a cloud computing platform provided by Microsoft. And it is available in right now 54 plus regions. This means that you can imagine the kind of scale at which the cloud computing platform is getting built. So there are region means that it can be one particular country in which in a particular area that the data center has been created. Now that is something at a very high level that's called a region. So this means overall Azure platform is available in lots of areas. It is available in US in multiple regions or in fact in multiple areas of US. It is available in India. It's available in UK, Australia and a lot of different countries. So we have got approximately 54 regions or in fact few more than that and very recently region has also been established in Africa. So you can imagine the scale at which the cloud computing infrastructure has been built and only thing that you need to do is go and consume. It's not just about the different regions in which it is available. It is also about number of services which are available on these cloud computing platforms. Now when I say cloud computing platforms as I said Azure is not the only one AWS is there Google Cloud Provider is there and there are a few more. So all these different providers are providing us with lots and lots of services. Now what do we mean by this service service is basically for example you want to create a virtual machine. So what do you do that's a service so you can go ahead and consume that service. Let's say you want to store some data so you can go ahead and create a storage account. So that's also another service. So right now there are 100 plus services which are available in Azure. I think number is approximately 150, but just to have a big picture, it's the 100 plus services which are available. The other important point is that it's available in 140 countries. Regions are more than 54, but then the services of Azure are available in 140 countries. Now you can think about it. You're right now in one country. You can start working with the cloud computing platform. You can go ahead and once you move to any other country, Let's say the people there are also using cloud computing. So there is no difference in terms of if you're sitting in one country or the other one, you can go ahead and use the cloud computing platform. Now, this is one figure which I wanted to show you before we begin. I think this was taken around four or five months back, but this is still very relevant. So it says that it's a piece of cutting from Forbes, which says that Microsoft beats Amazon in 12 month cloud revenue. Now, the point here is not to show you that Azure is better or AWS is better. That we'll talk about later. But then the idea to show this clipping is that both these services are approximately earning around $26 billion per year. This was a figure around six months back. And in fact, these services are growing at a very phenomenal pace. So basically, I think last quarter, growth figure was approximately 50% for Azure. So you can imagine the scale at which these services are growing. $26 billion in one single year, it's a big, big number. That is why these companies, these cloud computing platforms, they are spending lots and lots on building up the infrastructure and they are promoting a lot of stuff on the cloud. And that is where you will see your organizations have also started moving towards the cloud and they are consuming the services. Of course, the organizations are also saving and these companies like Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Alibaba, they are earning lots and lots of money on top of it. So that is why there is a lot of push in moving towards the cloud. So you can see here if I just point out to let's say one single service, it's called the infrastructure as a service. Okay, this means that you just want to have virtual machines in the cloud. You just want to have some compute in the cloud. You go ahead and consume it. 
So in 2017, the revenue was for all these cloud providers was approximately $30 billion. And what you see in 2021, we are in fact halfway down this graph and $30 billion was in 2017. It's approximately $52 billion or in fact, it'll be $52 billion in this particular year. And going forward by 2021, it is going to be $83 billion. Now that's a projection. Now you can see here, starting 2017 up to 2021, almost three times this numbers are increasing. So you can see how fast these companies are moving towards the cloud platforms. One other thing I can show you here is, for example, SaaS services. This is like a software as a service, which many of you might have heard, or in fact, most of you might be knowing about it. So approximately it was $60 billion in 2017. Now this is approximately going to touch $117 billion in 2021. So again, you can see the scale at which these services are growing. So that is why it is very important for all of us who are into the IT sector to start moving towards the cloud. Okay, as a developers, as administrators, as the operations guys, it is very important for us to start moving to work. One last thing which I want to show you is this is a figure from Gartner, which says that as of April 2018, AWS and Microsoft are the leaders in the cloud computing platform. Of course, there is Google, which is also a leader, but it's still not as close to what Microsoft and AWS are doing. Okay, so that is why if you want to choose a cloud computing platform, you can go ahead and choose AWS. You can choose Microsoft. Of course, there are more which are coming up and which has got lots of interesting services, but still AWS and Microsoft are way ahead in this area. You would see that most of the companies have started migrating towards either AWS or Microsoft or Azure basically. Last thing which as I said, so there are 54 plus regions and one region has just come up. I think in the last couple of weeks back in Africa as well. So this is one figure which tells us where these regions are located. So if you guys are joining from India, you will see that West India, Central India, South India in all these places Azure has went ahead and set up a data center on the left side. You can see in US in Canada, a lot of data centers have come up. And of course, there are some on the right. So in the European side, so there are a lot of data centers which are also there. Okay, so this is how the Azure data centers have come up across the geography and you can go ahead and consume resources or build your resources in any of these regions. All right, so let's get going now. I think we have already talked about what is Azure, but let me just slightly brief you on some of these services which are available in Azure. So we have already talked about this stuff. What is Azure? When we talk about the features of Azure, the first thing that has come up is on demand provisioning. What does we mean by on demand provisioning? For example, if you are working in your on prem environment, what happens? Let's say you have an e commerce site and your requirements are suddenly growing. Now, what will you do? You will actually go ahead and say that I need more physical servers to handle that demand. So when you say that I need more physical servers, this means your company will have to raise up a purchase order. You'll have to provision the machines or basically buy the machines. Once you get those machines, you put it in your data center, then you do all the configuration changes, you do all the deployments, everything needs time. Okay, of course, you need to have some cooling in place, you need to have networking in place, all this stuff you have to do in order to scale your applications or even start building a simple application. Okay, in your on prem environment. Now, when we come to the cloud, it's an on demand provisioning, which means now if I want to start building an application, I can simply go ahead and provision a particular resource in the cloud or pick up a particular service and provision it in the cloud in just a matter of seconds. All right, so this is what we get when we move to the cloud. If I want to scale, if I have, let's say right now one VM and suddenly I want to scale it up to 100 VMs, can I do it on prem? Very, very difficult. So when it comes to the cloud, Scaling from 1 VM to 100 VMs is just a matter of seconds. All right, so this is what we called as a on demand provisioning. Second thing is about scalability, which I have already just pointed out. So if you just want to scale out, which means you want to add more and more resources in your applications, you can do it in a matter of minutes and seconds. The other important point to note here is that in case your e commerce site requires a lot of resources during the festive season. So you go ahead and provision these resources in your on-prem environment and that's it. But after the festive season, what happens? The demand comes down. Now, when your demand comes down, the additional infrastructure that you have purchased and provisioned, it's lying waste. Okay, so in those cases, you have already spent the money as part of your capital expenditure. Now, when you come to the cloud, what you can do, you can provision on demand 
and then once your demand is not in place which means there is not much requirement right now you can scale down so when you scale down you only pay for what you are consuming that is the point number three pay as you consume so if you are right now building a normal very small application in your dev environment in the cloud you just pay for one single vm when you put it to production you want 100 vms you can simply scale up up to 100 vms and you pay for 100 vms tomorrow if for your e-commerce site if the festive season is over the demand comes down then you can scale down all the machines and you only pay for number of resources that you provision so on demand provisioning scalability and pay for what you are using very important points the number four is that you can abstract the resources which means that in normal on-prem environment you have to take care of networking physical servers and all the stuff yourself now when you come to the cloud you don't need to worry about where is my hardware of course you can get access to that but then you still don't need to worry about where is my hardware is it running up to date is it completely patched is it secure so all these things are taken care of by azure only thing you have to worry about is your application of course there is one more point is about efficiency of experts so this means that let's say you are into dotnet you know how to build dotnet applications or if you are into java you know how to build java applications or maybe php python and all the different language or basically the frameworks which are available you can go ahead and build your applications in whatever environment you want or whatever languages you want and then you can simply come to the cloud and deploy your application this means that you don't have to worry about that if i'm coming to azure do i need to know dotnet the answer to that is no and in the same way if you go to aws and if you think that i'm a dotnet developer will aws be useful to me the answer to that is yes because you can go ahead and create an application in any platform whatever skills you have you go and build your applications and you can deploy it in any cloud platform so the last thing is about measurable which means that whatever you are consuming it is measurable in terms of you know some metrics whatever you are consuming based on those metrics that is the only thing you pay for okay so let's talk about the azure platform as we have you know spent some good amount of time on this but still i want to just focus slightly more on the azure to let you know that what different kinds of applications or what different kind of services you can consume on azure which means that if you have got a messaging infrastructure you can provision something called as service bus as i told you earlier there are approximately 100 plus services which are available so this is just a glimpse of what you can do if you want to build a messaging infrastructure you can go and consume something called as basically the messaging infrastructure in azure in the form of service bus if you have got applications you can put it on vms you can put it on infrastructure backed services like service fabric you can have docker containers you can use kubernetes or you can use the serverless platforms like app services and deploy your applications on the other side if you have got database requirements or if you have got storage requirements then you have the sql server you have got mysql postgresql sql data warehouse or in fact you have got lots of different things like azure storage azure data lake so all these services are available of course they have their different use cases which you should learn about then only you go ahead and start consuming these services all right and on the other hand all this infrastructure is completely managed by azure which means you do not have to worry about where is your infrastructure for example right now i'm sitting in india so i can go ahead and in fact create a resource or provision a resource in us so this is as simple as doing it in your laptop you just go ahead and create a resource in any other region and you are good to go so let's learn about few more azure services all right so we have already talked about some of the basic services in the previous slide the things that you need to consider is basically what kind of compute options are available now if you're coming not just from the application word if you're also coming from let's say a bi word or big data word then also you have got a lot of compute services which are available for example virtual machines app services or in fact platforms like databricks and you know spark and all that stuff which is available you can go ahead and select the compute infrastructure in the cloud then of course if you have a lot of in fact applications which are running in your on-prem environment and you want to do the migration into the cloud so there are a lot of services which are available in azure to help you do this migration if you want to migrate your storage if you want to migrate your data if you want to migrate the applications which are running in vms or if you want to simply take your applications which are running in vm right now and in the cloud you don't want to use the vms 
we have got different services available in Azure to do migration of all your activities or in fact all your applications into the cloud. The other interesting point to note is that it's not just about the you know just take your application and migrate it into the cloud. It's also about building up hybrid applications which means that you can build up an application which is running on prem but then you want to extend some part of the application onto the cloud you can do that as well. All right so migration is not just about you have to dump all your current infrastructure and move everything to the cloud you can move a part of your application or move a part of your system into the cloud and you can have hybrid options available next and very important point is about security and compliance which means that you know every time people start going to the cloud the first thing business will ask you is is cloud secure so i can tell you that security and compliance has been built right into these platform services like either for azure or aws or any other provider so azure is also very very secure in fact there are tons of ways in which you can provision your security to make sure that it is very much compliant with your on-prem resources it is also compliant with your organization policies and of course we have talked about storage as well so in case of storage we have got lots of options you want rdbms or the relational storage you have got sql mysql postgresql sql data warehouse and lots of different services if you simply want to dump your files if you have got for example youtube like application you want to do some streaming of data you want to store some video files you want to store some audio files you can provision azure storage and of course for big data processing you can use data lakes so all these different storage options are available in the cloud all right so few more things database we have already talked about then of course the messaging infrastructure if you have got you know the messaging based architecture which means you have got two services running separately but you want both of them should collaborate with each other by sending out messages to each other so that you can do that in azure and networking is a very important and very big concept in azure just like your on prem network you can build very same networks in the cloud and they are as secure as your on prem networks and in fact i'll go to this extent of saying that whatever you provision in the cloud it can be even much more secure than your on prem environment because there are lots of security features which are being handled by azure so of course there are a lot of features handled by azure in terms of uh, security but then you can also go ahead and configure the security way you want just like your on prem environment is as secure as you want it to be in the same way you can make your cloud environment as secure as you want it to be and finally if you want to do monitoring if you want to do management of all your resources in the cloud you can use some of the tools in azure so i hope you guys have got some idea of what is azure so what is azure where do we use azure and what are the different services in azure one interesting area that i want to touch up today is devops we want to know about what is devops what are the services available in azure to handle the devops so let's first learn about what is devops all right so first thing is when we say what is devops so basically just for the definition perspective it's a set of practices intended to reduce the time between committing a change so let's say you are building an application if you commit a change committing this change and taking it to the production is a very long process but then devops means that once you commit a change and finally taking that change to the production devops is something which can help you reduce the overall time and provide you a standard set of practices using which it makes your deployment very very smooth of course it can help you maintain high quality in your application this means if you want to do testing if you want to do some reviews all these things basically are covered in the devops some of you guys might be coming from the development background some of you might be coming from the operations background so this is a place where both of us meet together the developer the operation guys they come together and work together so far in our normal work environments if we are not into devops what do we do the developers have the responsibility of you know doing some coding building that and finally putting it into a source control once you put it into a source control the test team will actually take that source code do their own builds and start doing the testing on top of it now once they are doing this testing they'll do some test stuff push it back to the development team and this to and fro keeps happening once all this testing is complete then you put everything into the operations bucket then you tell them that yes we are done we have completed everything now you go ahead and make a release of it do the deployment do the operations on top of it keep monitoring the stuff if you face any challenges then inform the development team now this used to be a very siloed approach 
so developers and testers working separately the operations guys are working separately and there used to be a lot of friction between these two areas so now when we come to the devops environment these two set of people they have actually become one which means you together do the development you together put it into the source control you do the testing and finally you go ahead because it's not just individual people it's a team so you go ahead and do the release you do the deployment and finally do the monitoring so that you know because if you have started developing something you know that what is the best thing you have developed and how you need to handle that so this is one area where the developers and operations they come together and work as a team friction can be reduced the time to market becomes faster and the quality even becomes much better do not worry if you do not get the 100% of what is happening but then the overall idea to understand is that now the developers and the operations they come together and work together as one single team just for this you know a very small diagram the developers they'll build something they'll start pushing it to the operations team so you do the deployment you take care of everything the operations if they'll face any challenges they'll start pushing it back to the developers team looking at a very small thing okay if i can solve something very quickly that's fine otherwise i'll start pushing it back to the developer team saying that this is not working so there is a lot of friction and there is a lot of miscommunication that happens in this kind of environment way to solve it is that both of us the developers and the operations work together as a team okay i hope you got some glimpse of what is devops and now we're going to talk about some tools which are available in devops when we say devops each of these areas are covered by different kinds of tools so if you are doing some development you might use let's say eclipse you might use let's say visual studio you might use visual studio code and then you are checking in your code in tfs team foundation services you might be checking in your code in jira in git or a lot of different repositories now this is one area now, of course if you have to do some builds you can use a kudu server you can use maven you can use gradle so all these different tools are used to build your applications finally if you are done building your code and if you have done all the check-ins then the testing happens you might be using selenium you might be using selenium or j units to do the testing of your applications now again you can see here all these different areas require different kinds of tools and if you are releasing something then of course you can use jenkins and bamboo to release your stuff finally you do the deployment all right so there are different tools to do the deployment and then you do the operations which means your operations team is sitting there and doing all these operation stuff and they are monitoring this stuff using different tools when we say that we want to build a devops platform we want all these tools what you see here to work together so that you can do this activity without having to do any manual intervention okay and this is where we are going to spend our time into looking at how these tools can be used when we go to azure devops i guess you guys have learned about what is azure some basic stuff and what is devops now we are going to look into if i have to do all this devops activity in azure okay so what is it that is available to us and now let's learn about what is azure devops so azure devops is something which is providing us all these set of tools integrated into one single environment this means that if you know how to work with eclipse if you know how to work with tfs if you know how to work with git selenium all these different tools then you can use azure devops or in fact in my case as well i didn't knew you know a lot of tools but still when i started learning about azure devops i started learning about all these things as well so you don't have to worry that if you are not a part of any of these particular areas for example if you are not part of right now how to do the deployment or if you are not part of how to do monitoring and you are on the developer side or basically you are into the development side then you don't have to worry that will i be able to use devops or not so the answer to that is yes you will be able to use the devops or in fact that will help you move towards the devops even if you know maybe a couple of parts of it so now we are going to talk about what are different components of azure devops and once we'll see some demos you will be very clearly able to understand how you can take your application from the planning stage up to the deployment and monitoring stage using the tools in azure okay so let's learn about what are different components of azure devops which are available now let me just show you all five actually so there are five different components which are available as part of azure devops first thing that we need to know is about azure boards there are people who come from the scrum background they are coming from the project management background they know how to create some features they know how to create epics 
they know how to create the stories they know how to create task and all that stuff and then there are developers who themselves go and create the task on which they are going to work and there are testers who just want to create some test cases and after the test cases are done they want to create the bugs which they find in the system now all these activities can be done as part of the azure boards number two is of course after you have done all the planning after you have created all the epics all the features all the stories task and everything second thing you want to do is development for example you start doing development in tfs you start doing development in eclipse any id that you want to use you can do the development once you are done with the development now you want to push all this into a source control now this is where azure repos will come in and it will help you store all the information so in the source control you check in your code and azure repos is a place which provides us with a lot of different repositories in fact right now it's two if you want to use uh, team foundation services or if you want to use git so basically you can provision that in azure repos and you can start checking your application code in azure repos so again we are going to see all these things in action today the third thing is once you have checked in your code what do you want to do next so there are two things that you want to do first thing is that you want to run something called as a build pipeline when you have checked in your code you want to make sure that nobody has checked in some wrong code so this is where you build your code of course the developers have the responsibility to build the code on their local machines this is not a good practice now if developers is just building it on their local machine this means that maybe some of the dependencies on that machine are not correct or maybe it's not in sync with the other team members so this means that if person says that yes it is building on my machine and i just want to push it in the source control is that good the answer is no because this means that if somebody will have a special dependency in the application which is installed locally but it's not installed you know for everyone for others when they will download that code it will fail so that is why whenever the developers push something in the repos or basically in the source control it is going to be taken by the azure pipeline it is going to do something called as a build okay so the building of code happens in the azure pipeline now next thing is the build has already happened what do we need to do next the next thing we need to do is release this code now i can release it in the dev environment i can release it in let's say pre prod or uet environment or i can also release this stuff in production environment but normally what do you do if developers check in something we do the build of the code and then we release it in the dev environment now once it goes to the dev environment or maybe in a test environment it is going to run after it run completes then you would want to run some kind of you know some test on top of it let's say if you have deployed a web service so if you have deployed a web service you would want to test if it's behaving correctly or if let's say you have deployed a web application you want to check if everything is looking fine in that web app or not so there you can run manual test cases automated test cases you can even do the exploratory testing all that stuff can be done as part of the azure test plans all right and finally once all this test plans is done we can again use basically the pipelines to release something to different environments like uat production and all that stuff while all these things are going on there are a lot of things you can configure like workflows or in fact let's say approval workflow so if you are checking in something you want to make sure the review happens so that can be taken care in the azure repos if you are releasing something to the uat environment you need let's say an approval from your team lead or you need an approval from the program manager so all these approvals are by default built in into all these services now one thing which i haven't touched upon is azure artifacts now this is something for example let's say you have got 10 projects and all these 10 projects have got common dependencies it may not be common in all but let's say three projects are using one dependency five projects are using some other dependency so what you can do you can collect all these dependencies and put it into a one single location called azure artifacts so i'm going to show you few of these things in demo today that how you can use azure boards azure repos azure pipelines and of course i'm not going to touch in the demo on test plans and artifacts now i hope everybody understood this overall infrastructure we have got azure boards to create our work items we have got azure repos to store our code we have got azure pipelines which can help us do the build of the code release of the code into a particular environment then we have got azure test plans which we can use to do our testing which could be a manual test cases automated test cases exploratory testing 
all that can be done as part of the Azure test plans. And finally, if you have got some common DLLs or common jar files which you want to store it as part of your repository, then you can use Azure artifacts. Now let's look at some of the more things. Now, first thing, as I said, is Azure boards. So we have got five different components as part of Azure boards. All right. So as I said earlier, Azure boards is a service for managing the work of your software project, which means you want to create some, let's say, epics. You want to create some features, basically some tasks, some product backlog items. You want to create some bugs. All this can be handled in Azure boards. So you can set up that I want to follow the agile process. I want to follow the scrum process. I want to use the Kanban. So all these things are available as part of the Azure boards. So it does not matter that what kind of process you want to follow. I know that a lot of people know about agile. So guys, I'm also an agile and safe certified. So I know there are different processes and all these different processes can actually be handled by Azure boards. So what you can do, you can go ahead and create work items. Then you can have the backlogs. Now I'm going to tell you what is a work item and what is a backlog. And then we have Azure boards. In fact, board is something where basically you can run some queries and see that what is something in a particular sprint or let's say what are the tasks which are active or what are the tasks which are closed. If you just want to say that what were the tasks which were released in this particular sprint. So all this information you can get it from the boards. Next thing is about sprints. Now let's say a sprint is of 15 days. So in 15 days, what are the work that we are going to accomplish? So those things or basically those tasks or features, they go into sprints. All right. And finally, we have the dashboards which can help you have the overall picture of what is the progress of your particular sprint or what is the overall progress of a particular release. Okay, so this is what is covered as part of the Azure boards. We can just talk slightly more on this and then we'll see that in the demo. Now, what do we see here? We have got work items, pretty simple stuff. Create, let's say you can see here, this is a bug being created. This is a user story which is created or basically the backlog item which is created. Then we have the task which are getting created and the same way we have got features. We have got epics which we can create as part of the work items. Then we have got boards so you can see that what is basically the particular flow of your current sprint or what is the flow of your project. Of course, we have got backlogs. Now we can arrange. What do we want to do as part of the backlog? How do you want to prioritize your different work items so you can deliver your software on time? Next thing is about sprints. If you guys have not worked with sprint, so do not worry because we don't want to go into the what are the details of sprints, but then sprint is basically, let's say, a small time boxed window in which you can go ahead and deliver a particular part of your product. In your e commerce uh, application, if you say that we want to deliver the checkout functionality. So let's say if you are ready to deliver the checkout functionality in uh, two weeks as part of the sprint. So your checkout feature or your checkout epic will go inside that particular sprint. So once it goes inside that particular sprint, the whole team starts working towards that particular area. And what they do, they try to complete all that stuff during that 15 day time box window. And that is what you can build as part of the sprints. All right, so then we have the final dashboards where you can see what is the current status of your project. Before we go further and look into other different aspects like uh, pipelines and stuff, I just want to give you a small demo of how you can create the work items, how you can create the backlog items and how you can use the boats. So let me stop here for a while. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is going to go to something called as dev.azure.com. What you need to do here is if you are not signed in, they'll ask you to sign up or sign in. And once you sign in, this is the kind of basically the dashboard you will see. What you can do here, the first thing you can do here is create a new project. All right, so let me create one. What do you see here? It is asking me that is it a private project or is it a public project? Now, let's say if I want to create a project called my test project 4, I'm not going to create it. It takes some time, you know, to set up everything. But what I can show you here is that now it is asking that what is the version control? So basically, where do you want to keep your source code? Do you want to keep it in Git or do you want to keep it in TFS? Okay, so you can go ahead and select the different version control options which are available. Now, of course, I think with time they will keep adding more and more, you know, source controls or the version control repositories here, which you can use. But most common ones which we everybody knows is Git. We also have GitHub 
which is again a repository for storing the git based version control of course there is something from microsoft which is available which is the team foundation if some of you guys have worked before with tfs or the team foundation services this is the one it is totally up to you how do you want to store your code so i'm going to select git right now the next thing is about work item process so if you want to follow the agile process you can use this one if you want to use a scrum process you can follow this one then of course you have got cmmi and a basic one now basic is something which does not follow a particular process but this is something which can help you set up either the agile process or the scrum process it's like a kind of a blank template but if you are comfortable working with agile environment you can select this one and you can click on create now as soon as you do that what you will see it's something like this one my test project 3 because I created this one and I added few things here. So I want to show you that all right before we go into inside this particular my test project 3 What are the things you can see here something called as Azure boards, which we have already talked about the repositories Azure repos Then we have the Azure pipelines. We have got the test plans and then we have got the artifacts the same stuff that we have seen in the slide It's available on dev.azure.com once you create a project now let me go ahead and first of all click on this project what I have done in as part of this project I am using agile plus I am using git so I've selected this one and this is now showing up in my test project 3 the first thing as I told you that I want to show you about is boards now let me go here on the left hand side you can see boards repos pipelines test plans and artifacts so I'm going to go inside boards right now and straight away show you what you can do in the boards first thing is of course pretty simple if you want to do the planning so what do you do you create something called as a let's say a task or basically you create a work item now work items are of different types you can have something called as an epic now epic is something which is very very high level so let's say your leadership team comes up and they define something called as an epic now they will say that we want to deliver this kind of project all right so there they are defining a particular epic now inside the epic what you can do your product owners or let's say your project managers They will go ahead and decide on the number of features that you want to have as part of the epic Let's say you want to build an e-commerce site So in e-commerce site the business says that we want to set up some e-commerce setup for our this business That's an epic once you go inside that epic you will say that I want to create a feature now What is a feature here? I want to deliver the cart functionality. I want to deliver the product page I want to have a recommendation engine or maybe I want to have a search engine in my e-commerce portal Now this is what will be created by product owners or they will be created by the project managers Now when you say I want to create let's say an search service in my e-commerce site So as part of the search service, what do you need? You will go ahead and create some stories So in the story, what will you say? You will say that I want to have some database ready which will contain all the information of my products then I am going to have let's say one more story for building up a middle layer which can help me You know some building some api's which can help fetch this information from my database and show it to the end users Then I'll build another story to say that I want to show it to the end customers And once you have these user stories, then you go ahead and create task inside that particular story So let me start building up. Let's say one feature I'm not going to you know go into the complete agile model, but right now I'm just saying that we want to create a feature for uh, let's say search in e-commerce Okay, just remember guys. This is not the way we write in uh, agile format So if you want to you know just create a new feature There is a particular format in which you should create the feature basically the text has to be in a particular format But that's not the agenda for today. The agenda is to show you that you can create a new feature You can provide a particular iteration path this means I want to do it in this particular time frame. Okay, I can create multiple iterations Okay, and I can put up the iteration here now next thing what I can do here I can link it to some existing item. All right, so we'll do it later But then we'll say what is the business value of this? What is the time criticality? What is the start date? What is the target date which we want to complete this particular feature? This feature is new right now. So let me save it you can go ahead and provide description you can use the discussion board to do some discussion on top of this particular feature and once you are final that yes our feature details are ready then what is the next thing let me go back to work items and let's say i want to create a particular user story 
what will I do? I'll say that I want to create uh, let's say in the search. I want to create the API's And what do I need to do? I need to link it to the epic or in fact I need to link it to the feature on the right side add link existing item and I can also say that what is the parent here? So the parent is We search for it. So the parent is search in e-commerce. Okay, so I'm going to link this one and say that I'm creating a user story. Let me save it. In fact, you can see that if you know about what is story pointing so you can add story points here or in fact, let me tell you this. If you go for you know for any kind of course or not just from here, but if you go for any kind of course about how do you handle agile? So there you will learn more about story pointing so you can also provide the risk. Let's say this is a medium risk. What is the priority here all this kinds of setup you can provide here that you want to do some architectural thing or you want to is it a business feature all this information is provided as part of the user story so let me save this one go back to the work items so right now this is showing us separately but once we'll go to the boards let me go to the backlogs first what you will see here all the different stories which are available now this is something on which we want to work let me add one more story here new work item and let's say ui for search okay let me add this one now what you see here is we have created now two stories in the first print or basically in the planning side let me just open it up and So as part of the iteration what we are going to do in the first iteration or let's say in the first 15 days what we are going to deliver we are going to deliver API for search service or in fact actually both of them have got into the same iteration so now you can see here we have got one story which we are going to cover in iteration one which is right now the current one and one story we are going to cover as part of the second iteration now in fact if you go ahead and add more tasks to it let's say if i click on i can even change the priority for this one by dragging and dropping now click on api for set service i can go ahead and click on or in fact i can see the whole history of that particular feature or in fact that particular user story i can also go to this particular link and i can say that i want to add some child items here okay so i can say add a new item and that is a child item which is of type task and then I can say that I need to do some basic setup or maybe let's say some design of my search service. So that is one task I am creating. All right. So what is the original estimate for creating this particular task? I can say 10 hours. What is the remaining time 10 hours completed zero and I'll provide some description here and save it. So this means if I close this one. And in fact, I'll just refresh this page. You will get a complete idea of what are the tasks which are or what are the stories on which you are going to work on or basically what are the backlog items on which you are working in and what are the tasks under that. So this is the kind of thing that you can set up with Azure DevOps. I hope this stuff is clear to you guys. So we have got different iterations. Let me click on sprints so you can see right now the first iteration is going on and the design is here once I start working on this I can even use the visual editor to make it active once this stuff is done I can even move it to the result state okay let me just open this one I can just close this task and say that's it so this is how my overall flow of basically the work items work now next thing which I want to show you is repositories repositories we mentioned that we can use either git or we can use TFS to basically maintain our source code I'm just going to show you a demo right now to show you how all this stuff works so what you will do here you can set up a repository which is like a git or a TFS then you can go ahead and start checking in your code what first thing you will see here is because we are using git so I'm clicking on something called as branches and in the branches there is a default branch which is always available now that's called as a master branch in fact you can go ahead and create more branches in some of the source controls like TFS 
you will have one single place where everybody is checking in the code. Now in case of Git, it does not work the same way. It's a very different structure. So what you do is you create your own branch. You work in that branch, which means branch is basically a copy of a master branch. So you will go inside that branch. You will make your check ins. Now that is your branch in which you are making the changes. You will do the testing. Once you are completely fine that everything is running fine, then you are going to push those changes from your branch to the master branch. Remember that if you haven't worked with Git before, so there is nothing to worry about because this is not something specific to Azure DevOps. What I'm talking right now about the branches, this is something specific to the Git. So let me show this thing that we have right now a default master branch. If I'll click on this one, what you will see, I have already checked in one particular project into my repository. Okay, that's called as a web application too. If I click on this one, it's a very simple MVC application that I've created and added it into the source control. I'll go to the Visual Studio. Now in the Visual Studio, you can again see that I am using Git tools for Visual Studio and this is showing me that I have got a master branch. Now what I can do, I let me create one more application and check that in. So let me create a simple application, file new project, ASP.NET Core Web Application. Remember, you can use Eclipse, you can use IntelliJ, or you can use any other ID to do the development. Okay, so this is not restricted to .NET or Visual Studio. You can do use any kind of platform or any framework to build your application, or it can be in any ID. Eclipse, IntelliJ, anything will work here. All right. So what I'm going to do is create a new application called Web Application 3. Let this application be created. All right. Now that we have created our application, what do we need to do? You can see here that my project is ready. I'm going to simply push this code into the source control. Okay, how do I do this? Let me first of all ignore a few of these items. And what I'm going to do is okay, I'm going to state these items now. This is something very specific to Git. So if you are not comfortable with Git, do not worry because this is something you can learn very quickly. All right. So what do I have here? I have got my full application, which is web application three. I can go ahead and check in into a Git repository, which is managed by Azure DevOps. So I'm going to say checking in web application three. Okay. Also, I can actually go ahead and map it to a work item. Let me click on this one and go back to portal to my work item. In fact, we do not have a work item for development. Let's create one. So UI for search service. Let's go back to the links. I hope you guys remember now you can click on add link new item and let's say we call it build web app three. Okay, let's call it create. I know this is not the way we write the task, but just to give you an idea that I'm just creating a new task called create web app three. That's it. So it is going to give me create web app three task is ready. I can click on this one. And the task number is 10. Okay, so I'm going to copy this one. Go back to Visual Studio. Enter the ID of the work item. Okay, so I'm going to say 10 is the ID. And you can see basically the related work item. Now what we are doing here. We are creating a new application when we are checking in the code. We are also specifying what is the related work item. All right. So let me commit all this stuff in the code. Sync it back to the cloud, which means now I have checked in into my local environment. I just want to push these changes into the cloud environment. So again, this is specific to Git. You do not have to worry about this. Just give me a second. I'm just something related to, you know, Git. I need to. Okay, so I think this should work now. We push these changes. Okay, so now this is going to push my changes to the source control. 
all right so you can see here it has been successfully pushed to the master branch if i go back to the devops environment what you will see here in fact if i just open up the application as well so you can see here this is the parent side and in fact let me just uh, refresh this one okay so what do you see here in the description or basically in my history i can see that i have done some check in here so it is linked to that particular check in now you can start visualizing this stuff so you have got tasks you have made your check ins from those check ins it is coming in once you make a check in and attach it to a particular work item it will be linked to that particular work item so if anybody is going and looking into what changes you have made as part of this task you can actually go ahead and see all that stuff now this is a part of the task next thing is let's go back to the repos and see the commits okay we have made a commit into the repository what do we see here we have got check in web app 3 okay so this is what we have checked in as part of the web application 3 that we just created now the next thing is i want to build this application okay so if you guys remember the second thing was checking in the source code after checking in the source code i want to automatically build this particular code so what do i need to do here i need to go to the third component called pipelines i see something called as builds which means i want to take up this particular source code and do an automatic build of that so what i can do i can click on something called as new build pipeline i've already got two created but i just want to show you from scratch how this is done so where is your code it is asking me so my code is present in a git repository so i'm going to select this one and what is asking me that where is your source okay or where is your git repository all right so my repository is in azure repos git okay so i'm going to select this one you can even select github for example if you just want to pick up the code from github directly and use it you can do it here or you have the github enterprise server if you have got github deployed in your local environment or in your enterprise environment you can use subversion or you can in fact if you have got tfs there is a different way to use it but then right now we are focusing on using the git in azure repos all right so here you can see it i have got my test project 3 which is my basically my repository and my team project then i am going to pick up all the code from master branch okay so i am going to click on continue and the first thing that i need to do is tell azure how to build my project so how do i want to build my project i want to build this project as part of azure web app this means i want to take my code and finally i want to deploy it in a service in azure called azure web app when we say azure web app then i want to build my project as part of the azure web app okay so if you want to do a normal build for example of your asp.net application you can do it if you have got an android project you want to build it if you have got maven so let's say you have a java project and you want to use maven to build your projects you can do it you have got python packages you have got asp.net core then we have got if you have know what is a container if you want to build docker containers you can do it from here uh, if you want to deploy basically build and deploy for azure kubernetes services you can do it then if you have got just a function you can build a c sharp function you have the azure web app for java so all these things can be done as part of the azure build pipelines okay so what i'm going to do right now is select a service in azure basically i want to deploy in this particular service called azure web apps and that is why i'm going to select this one to build my code now if i have to build my code what do i need to provide i need to provide where is my solution all right so i'm going to click on this one and tell the system or basically tell my build pipeline that it resides in web application 3 okay this is my new project that i picked up i'm going to select this one and click on okay then finally provide where is this azure subscription in which i want to deploy so i'm going to select this is my subscription in azure and what is the name of the app service again there are few things that we are rushing through okay so this is what we can select and next thing is i can go ahead and select so this is what we are going to do we are going to build as part of the build pipeline so we are going to take the source code from the git repository do a build of it automatically let me save this one and queue it which means i'm going to save this pipeline and start doing the build of my project so now that we are our build pipeline is ready which means our code is going to be get built 
let me show you when the build is happening what is going on so it is does going to take some time to do the build because this is the first time it is happening but i'm going to show you that i already have one pipeline which is already built for my web application too which was very similar so while this is running let me go to builds and this was the pipeline which was completed successfully so let me select this pipeline so this is how the build happens so if you open up anything it is going to give you the detailed logs of how the build happened so it picked up the code from your source control it did a build and you can see all the build activities which happened as part of this pipeline so you can see here it picked up the web application to project and it started doing the build it did all the copy files to output directory and clean up and all that stuff and finally it did a build of my project now once i did a build of my project what next so you can see here it approximately took five minutes to do the build so what you can do as part of your azure devops as soon as somebody checks in the code it will automatically trigger a build pipeline using which your application will be built and if there is a failure then the person will be informed back using a mail that your code is not correct okay so you have to rectify the, your code as soon as possible now once we have done all this build activity what next do we need to do we need to release it to a production environment or maybe to a ui environment how do we do that we do it using something called as releases so now that our this one is ready either i can click on release and build up a new release pipeline so let me click on this one and i'll say i want to create a new release so i'll click on release 2 and what you will see here now that the complete build which happened now it is asking me that where do you want to release it so i've already created a release pipeline in fact we can let me click on this and let's create a new one as well releases new pipeline and is asking me where do you want to do the deployment so i'm telling azure that i want to do the deployment in azure app services you can deploy a java application you can deploy a node.js application you can install it in service fabric you can install it you know deploy a rails on ruby application on app service you can deploy an is website all right so all these things you can do and i'm going to deploy in azure app service all right so once i select this i just need to provide what is the application basically which i want to build and what is the azure subscription in which i want to deploy the application let me select this one so there is one i have already created my test app service once i have done this i can save it so this is my release pipeline is ready so now my code has gone into source control my build pipeline which is picking up that source code and building it that is ready now this is my release pipeline which is going to take that build code and going to do the deployment okay so i can click on here and say create a release and that's it or in fact one more thing i can show you if i go back to the main pipeline i can even set up who will approve it before it goes into a particular environment so i can click for example pre deployment conditions and say who is going to do the pre deployment approval if your team lead needs to approve the overall release before it goes into uat or production then you can specify who is the approver so in this case i'm going to put in my name all right and i'm going to save this one so this means as soon as the deployment will start happening it is going to ask me for the approval i'll get an email that please approve the release deployment then only it can go to production so i'm going to click on now create a release and click on create so go to the release which has been created now and you can see it is saying pending approval what i can do is because right now i am the owner so i can click on approve and say yes i want to basically approve this particular release and then it will continue further to do the deployment now you can see here the approval is done and right now this is under queue which means as soon as the resources are available in azure it is going to start the release deployment and while this is right now it's in a queue state i can show you the one which i deployed for web application 2 so i'll go back to the releases okay so this one is already done in fact not this one just give me a second okay so this one is already done so what you will see here after basically everything is done or basically the release starts and it starts deploying you can see the logs here 
if there is a failure in your pipeline it is going to you know inform you that there is a failure in the release but you will get email so you can quickly act on that otherwise it will download all your build artifacts in our case it was a web application so it downloaded all the artifacts of my web application and then it is started deploying it to the azure app service okay so you can see all the logs in fact you can even write custom logs here that this is what we are doing as part of the release deployment on azure app service all right so you can see here successfully updated the deployment history app service application is running at this particular url and then you can use this url now once this release completes this means our code which we created has been deployed into production let me go back to azure now okay and i'm right now into azure portal which you can get from portal.azure.com you can click on my test app service which we are using for deployment and if i run this particular app service which is basically a platform for hosting the websites or in fact platform for hosting different websites apis mobile applications so i can click here and see my application is successfully deployed so just to summarize all this stuff now you can see here the application is ready there are five components basically of the azure devops which means that we have got azure boards in which you can manage your work items you can manage the tasks you can create either the scrum boards kanban boards or you can have the agile process all this is being handled as part of the azure boards now second thing is about azure repos where we have got git and tfs in which you can check in your code and you can manage all the branches you can manage complete git functionality which is available as part of the azure repos so you can check in your source code there the third thing is about azure pipelines in which after you have done the check-ins you can build your solution and you can also release your solution in multiple environments like dev pre-prod u at production all that stuff next thing is about azure test plans which we haven't covered i just wanted to give you an idea of what is a test plan so test plan is something where you can run your automated manual exploratory testing under azure test plans and finally you have the azure artifacts in which you can store some dependencies so this is the overall picture of azure devops starting from planning up to the release without manual intervention all this can be done as part of the devops and there are a lot of different personas which are involved here and they can work together okay so if you just remember this picture so basically now the developers are doing the development they also build these pipelines they are doing the deployment because now it's completely automated and they are also taking care of the production or the different environments that is why now the operation teams are also moving towards the development and development teams are also moving slightly towards the operations environment okay i hope makes sense to everyone so this is what we have for today so thank you so much bye bye